une croissance qui euh, épuise les ressources, une croissance qui sature l'atmosphère euh, de gaz à effet de serre, une croissance qui euh, épuise les sols, elle n'est pas compatible avec l'avenir de l'humanité. On pense que c'est un simple problème environnemental. Moi, j'entends encore tout le monde me dire qu'il faut sauver la planète. Et la planète, elle s'en fout. C'est l'humanité qu'il faut, qu faut sauver. La planète, elle s'en remettra. Peut-être pas dans le même état, peut-être pas avec la même diversité, peut-être pas avec le même éclat, peut-être pas avec la même beauté, mais elle s'adaptera. Mais nous, on va être pris de court et on est déjà pris de court. Donc, euh, et tant qu'on n'a pas conscience que c'est bien notre propre avenir qui est concerné, on ne se met pas en situation de se dire, allez, chacun, où qu'on soit, qui que l'on soit, quel que soit notre degré de responsabilité, on doit accueillir, participer, encourager, initier ce changement. Et donc, on est dans un enjeu universel qui concerne l'ensemble de la famille humaine. Et certains pensent pouvoir s'exonérer de cet enjeu-là, pensant que leur statut géographique, économique, religieux, que sais-je encore, leur crée une forme d'immunité par rapport aux conséquences de la crise écologique. Non, on est au pied du mur, plus qu'au pied du mur. Le mot « urgence » n'a plus de signification. Et on est dans ce paradoxe, c'est que jamais l'humanité n'a été aussi brillante, intelligente. Tous les outils sont là. Ça, c'est la bonne nouvelle. Mais ce qui fait défaut, c'est une volonté et une intelligence collective. Définir un chemin, définir un cap, et que chacun prenne sa route à son rythme, mais converge vers le même objectif. On a jusqu'à présent été dans un modèle économique qui épuise les ressources et quelque part qui altère des équilibres qui ont mis des centaines de millions d'années à s'établir. Recently, the way you know global warming is real is if the hottest year ever is the year you're currently in. 14 of the 15 hottest years ever measured have been since 2001. The hottest of all uh, was 2016. This graph shows average temperatures from 1951 through 1980. The white are the normal days. The Blue are the cooler than average days, and the red are warmer than average days. And in the 1980s, the entire curve shifted to the warm side. And we saw, for the first time, the appearance of a statistically significant number of extremely hot days in the lower right. In the 1990s, the curve shifted further. And in the last 10 years, the extremely hot days have become more numerous than the cooler than average days. We still have cool days, we still have cold days, but these extremely hot days are becoming much more numerous. L'hémisphère nord doit son climat tempéré à l'effet du courant Atlantique Nord. La chaleur émise par le soleil arrive à l'équateur et est diffusée au nord par l'océan. Mais le réchauffement global fait fondre les calottes polaires ce qui perturbe ce courant chaud de surface. Il pourrait même carrément l'interrompre. Si cela arrive un jour, ce sera la fin de notre climat tempéré. Professeur euh, Hall, notre économie est à sa manière aussi fragile que l'environnement. Peut-être ne faut-il pas l'oublier avant de faire du sensationnel à bon compte. Eh bien, le dernier morceau de glace qui s'est rompu faisait à peu près la taille de l'état de Rhode Island. Pour pas mal de gens, c'est un peu sensationnel for arranging this and for the privilege of talking with you. As you know, I, I have this passion for solving the climate crisis that goes back 40 years. And because I have studied it so closely, I'm hoping that the United States and India will accelerate our transitions to renewable energy together. I'll do the same thing after 150 years. After I've used my coal, after I've got my people jobs, after I've created my infrastructure and highways and roads, 
when I have technology, when my people earn fifty, seventy thousand dollars per capita income using low-cost fossil fuel-based energy, the way the United States did for 150 years. It's very easy to say now yeah. that oh, we are not using coal. What about all the past? So I'm I'm only asking for that carbon space which you utilize for 150 years. My point is not to deny your right to make your own choices as to what kind of energy you want. Obviously, you have that right. But what I am saying, when is the sun coming up today? I don't see it anywhere. I don't see the blue sky. And by the way, 10 years ago, when the movie An Inconvenient Truth came out, the single most criticized scene in that movie was an animated scene showing that the combination of sea level rise and storm surge would put the ocean water into the 9-11 memorial site, which was then under construction. And people said, that's ridiculous. What a terrible exaggeration. Something happened last night at one of the most iconic locations in New York, the World Trade Center, Ground Zero. A flood of water with a current so strong, it flooded the reconstruction. There is a wake up call here, and that is climate change and our vulnerability to it. It was true 10 years ago, it was true five years ago. It is undeniable today. So where's all that water going? I'll tell you where some of it's going. It's going into the streets of Miami Beach, Florida. High tides continue to bring a flood of frustration. Fort Lauderdale gets the award for the something you don't see every day video. Fish swimming on Cordova Road. Experts say in 30 years or so, a drive along Ocean Drive could be a drive in the ocean. Downtown Miami could be a wash. This is a temporary pump here. All temporary. You just can't help. Oh, that's supposed to stop the water? It keeps it back as long as possible, but it's not very effective. And what happened is with these new high tides that came in, this is, you can't do anything for it. So it's going to get worse and worse as the tide comes up. We're right. showing you an area that hasn't been actually fixed at all, as you can tell. And then on Wednesday, I think we're going to get together. We're going to show you some of the areas that used to be like this, that now we raise the roads and put in pumps. We've seen dramatic results. And it's yeah. so much better. Yeah. So you raise the road with saltwater resistant materials? Yes. And what level of sea level rise is this uh, designed to protect against? We are building in about a foot of sea level rise, and um, I'm sure the projections are going to continue to move. Kind of hard to pump the ocean. 
Why we gotta raise above it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's not easy. It's not easy. This is not a uh, not a simple fix. Yeah. You, know? you can only raise so much before you change everybody's lives around here. Yeah. Scott and I grew up here. And this wasn't the case 40 years ago. So we, if anyone wants to argue that it's not happening, it, it's happening. It's yeah. happening. I remember vividly when the civil rights movement first began to pick up steam. We saw Bull Connor turning fire hoses on young African-American kids, and we asked the older generation, why it's just and fair to have laws that discriminate on the basis of skin color? And when they couldn't answer that question, the laws began to change. This movement to solve the climate crisis is in the tradition of every great moral movement that has advanced the cause of humankind. And every single one of them has met with resistance to the point where the, many of the advocates felt despair and wondered how long is this going to take. Martin Luther King famously answered a question during some of the bleakest hours of the civil rights movement when someone asked, how long is this going to take? He said, how long? Not long, because no lie can live forever. How long? Not long, because the moral arc of the universe is long, but it bends toward justice. How long? Not long. We are close in this movement. We are very close to the tipping point beyond which this movement, like the abolition movement, like the women's suffrage movement, like the civil rights movement, like the anti-apartheid movement, like the movement for gay rights, is resolved into a choice between right and wrong. And because of who we are as human beings, the outcome is foreordained. And it is right to save the future for humanity. It is wrong to pollute this earth and destroy the climate by balance. It is right to give hope to the future generation. It will not be easy. And we too in this movement will encounter a series of no's. The great American poet Wallace Stevens in the last century, one of his lines was this, after the last no comes a yes. And on that yes, the future world depends. Don't let anybody tell you that we're going to get on rocket ships and go to Mars and live in hermetically sealed buildings. We couldn't even evacuate the city of New Orleans when the hurricane hit there. This is our home. On doit tous s'y mettre. On n'a pas d'autre choix que de sortir des énergies fossiles. On n'a pas d'autre choix que de rentrer dans un monde de sobriété. On n'a pas d'autre choix que de rentrer dans un monde d'économie circulaire. Tout le monde va s'y mettre. Mais tant que le diagnostic et tant que la perspective n'est pas partagée, eh bien dans un monde, où, et notamment dans notre pays, mais ce n'est pas le seul, où on aime la controverse, le débat, euh, les polémiques, on retarde et on ajourne. Mais on a tellement ajourné que depuis le sommet de Rio, qui aurait dû être des années utiles, on en a fait des années futiles. Et maintenant, on est au pied du mur. Vous voyez ce que vient de nous dire le dernier rapport du GIEC. Selon lui, et personne n'a capacité à le mettre en cause, on a un an et demi ou deux ans pour éviter de rentrer dans un scénario d'une forme d'irréversibilité, c'est-à-dire avant que les choses nous échappent totalement.
Pendant des années, nous avons pensé que nous pourrions sans vergogne continuer à exploiter notre planète et ses ressources naturelles, sans en subir les conséquences. Nous avions tort. 